God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <coughs> For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is con he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And if you go over to Romans chapter 10, in Romans chapter 10, starting with verse 8, but what sayeth it? The word is nigh unto thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confessions, confessions is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Yep. How they shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? Hmm. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things, which is the word of God. That's right. And being Father's Day, and we look about the fatherhood of God, and as we see that each of us in here have had a father, I know often uh, people will say that, I never had a father. Mm. Yeah, you did. God says he's the father of the fathers. Amen. Now, a lot of you may never have known your father. Okay? Or maybe your father died when you were little. But I just want to take a minute uh, to look back and reflect a little bit on my own dad, how I remember my father. Now, he was not by any means the perfect father, like all of us guys. <laughs> he was unsaved. Uh. He was an alcoholic, no. and he had a hot temper. Mm. I know the type. And he was very, very contentious. About as contentious as the day is long at times. Now, that's how I remember him in my youth. <coughs> at the same time, he was the hardest working man that I've ever met. He instilled the worth ethic in all of his eight children. He and my mother would often do without even the most modest luxuries so that he could provide for his children the best that he could. He taught four of his five sons the skills of carpentry. So we all had a trade, even at a young age. And when my dad became older, after he'd retired, you know, all, all of those years he used to say, uh, do as I say, not as I do. In hmm. other words, he would tell us, go to church with your mother, but he would stay home. Hmm. And I'd say, wait a minute, how come we have to go to church and you're not? Because you're supposed to do as I tell you, not as I say, as I do. I thought that was in the Bible or something. <laughs> <laughs> So, but when he when he retired, he started coming to church. All right. And uh, <laughs> he uh, he sometimes you know would uh, we might say make the preacher's day more interesting. Uh oh. <laughs> and I remember Pastor Woodby would come down after the service and he'd say. Well, Ray, how did I do today? My dad said, well, I stayed awake for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one day when they passed an offering plate 
he was watching, there were some, some young boys in there in church. And instead of putting money in the plate, they took money out of the plate. Oh. Okay. Now that's that's something you, you deal with. Uh, you know, you deal with it in the right way. <coughs> you might whisper to the usher, you know, go over and talk to those boys. That wasn't the way my dad dealt with it. My dad stands up and says, you! You know who I'm talking to, you boys. You took money out of that plate, you put it back now. <laughs> All right. Guess what they did? They put it back now. <laughs> and so my dad was that way. I mean, he was uh, he was quite a contentious fellow. He had a work ethic, and I said he, he always worked harder than any man I knew. Mm. And uh, he would he would sacrifice for his children. Now, when my dad had gotten older, uh, just before he died, he received the Lord as a Savior. Hallelujah. He used to. He used to uh, listen to me on the radio, and even though he would listen to me every day, he'd call me and say, I'm not going to listen to you no more. You preach too much on sin. <laughs> he said, when you're preaching on sin, it just makes people feel bad. Right. I listened to Moody. He said, they hardly ever preach on sin. And so, but then he would get on his, on his radio. He'd be on that radio, that uh, shortwave or whatever. And he'd be telling truckers all across the country, you ought to listen to my son, boy. He really lays it down. So he'd, all he'd right. Wow. One thing and Very good. Saying something else to me. <laughs> but I remember before he died, he was, I came and it was around Christmas time. And I said, Dad, are you ready to go? I said, dear, he said, I've been making my peace with the Lord. Yes, I, I have. And I've been praying and asking for forgiveness. I made my peace with God. I never could get him to come flat out and say the sinner's prayer. But he, he said that he had been, he said, I'm, I'm getting ready. And he asked me if I would read the Christmas story, the gospel through Matthew and Luke. And I did. And when I was finished, he asked me if I would read it again. All right. And I did, the whole thing. And when I was finished, he asked me again. I ended up reading that, that whole Christmas story to him. Four times. Yeah. Four times. Wait a minute. You just went from three to ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right, back there. Okay. She's the only one I know that can retrieve time. <laughs> so... Anyhow, that's that's some memories of my father, and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a minute. We've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 147 81 Superior Road, Newbury, Ohio. I'm Pastor Sanders, and the title of the message today was The Fatherhood of God. You're listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network, 4.3 <coughs> FM in Eagle, in Tampa, and Ocala. You can hear us daily at from 2 a.m., 2 a. 8 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Until next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, and remember always, always, Keep fighting the fight! Okay. Anyhow, we're going to take up an offering. Then we got to, we'll talk about some, we're here to give maybe some words of praise to some of our fathers. <coughs> some memories. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we gather here today as we think about the fatherhood of God. And Lord, how we thank you that we are your children, not the children of the of the adversary, not right. the children mm -hmm. of the devil. And yet so many today out there, and today more and more, they're openly coming out. And today, more and more, they're saying Satan is our God. And they're, they're running to that murderer, to that liar. Lord God, so as we gather here, we thank you for more blessings. And Lord, we know that to whom much is given, much is required. And Lord, I just thank you for the wisdom to want to be written in the, in the book of remembrance. Yeah. I just yes. thank you for the wisdom 
Lord, to want to be written in the book of life. And Lord, again, we know to whom much is given, much is required. And, and we're required to, to worship you in praise and in song. We're required, Lord, to worship you in our service and to serve you in our service and also into our tithes and offerings. And Lord, I just pray that there won't be anybody here, Lord, anybody here that will have to someday regret that they didn't meet the challenge, that they that they failed to respond, that they failed to, to worship you and pray, <coughs> song, service, or tithes. These things we ask, and Lord, I pray too that for everyone here that you turn their desires towards you more and more every day and every way. Amen. And Lord, I also Amen. pray that let it never happen, let it never happen that any one of us ever in any way deny you. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Whether taking up an offering, think about it. Who would like to give a little testimony and remember their father? Okay. How many of you still have fathers that are still alive? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> the single boys weren't sure. <laughs> I'm not they had that. to talk it over. I might be a dodge, I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> uh oh. Big Jim, would you like to give a testimony to of your father? <laughs> Just say something. Very good. Okay. Very good. Grandma March, would you like to give a testimony? Yes. It was not because of my father that I became a Christian. It was because of my mother. She, and how she managed to be his wife for as long as she did, I don't know. At one point, then, she lost a baby in an accident at full term, and she went into a mental institution and spent the rest of her life there. Mm -hmm. So I was blessed because mm -hmm. I had very good neighbors, both Mr. and Mrs., who helped me through my early life and taught me what Christianity was all about. So. Not only was God your father, he provided you with a surrogate father, huh? Yes, he did. Amen. Very good. Who else wants to give you? Yeah, Chuck. <clears throat> well, I grew up in Lorraine County on a dairy farm. Oh, who's going to believe that? Yeah. My, father, my father was a very stern taskmaster. In fact, he gave the term, before he even came out, uh, terminator. That's the way he worked. He was one of these people that just never made a mistake. Now he was a drill master. He, uh, Pastor Dale reminds me very much. He <laughs> 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 had a brother that was two years older, and they were exactly alike. And my sister and I used to call them Brick and Frack, the Funk Brothers. Because all oh, you did, you, you couldn't please them. Nothing ever pleased them. He, he, he instilled in me the fact of always being there with your family and guiding your family. Now, do I think he's saved? I'm not sure. I really don't think he's saved. He's another World War II veteran that came back and had a lot of bad memories from that war, which mm -hmm. millions of them did. But he was just a guy that uh, I still respect anyway. He was a well, he, he's still alive, obviously. No, he died. Oh, he, he died, died in nine. Okay. But as far as uh, being a true born again Christian, I have learned this from you. So I can't even say that my own sister and my mother are saved. I'm not sure because they're just very well, good. Out in this. 
Presbyterian religion and everything's kind of okay and everything. All these different types of Bibles and all these uh, beliefs and you know what? And it's just. Uh, well, you know, you're here every Thursday morning. You hear me praying for my three sisters and my one yeah. unsaved brother every week. Amen. And God answers prayer, you know. The last people, you know, the hardest people in the world to witness to are relatives. But if you Amen. witness to somebody, mm -hmm. God will send somebody else to witness to yours. Okay. Well, I wanted to say one other thing. I want to appreciate everyone here at the church for their prayers and support with my eye surgery. Uh, I know Jesus was in that operating room when my surgeon was operating. But of course, Cleveland Clinic can do some wonderful things, but I appreciate all the support that came here. And I can, I can tell you from my experience that if you give your um, personal situation, your health situation to Jesus, He will help you with it. It may not be in your time, it will be in His time. Amen. But He'll get it done. Right? Give Amen. Him all the praise and glory. Very good. My father's favorite expression was, talk is cheap. My father was a police officer in Youngstown. The last 10 years, 15 years of his life, he had retired because of a stroke. My mother was a registered nurse. My mother took care of my father till the day he died at home. She got no help. He died in her arms at home. My mother died in our living room on a hospice bed because she wanted to be with her family. Well, they taught me more about the meaning of love for one another <coughs> than I could ever read. And, uh, you know, talk would be cheap, but, you know, they were married 55, 60 years, and their everlasting love for one another proved far beyond the meaning of love. Very good, Carl. Okay, that's a very good testimony. You got Kathy crying. <laughs> no, no. Well, well, my my dad was my dad when when he was in um you know the the I I grew up in an alcoholic family, and um and uh, when he uh, uh, was the latter years um uh, he had um uh just um been um so so sickly and um and uh and it was um that he uh had a just a a change because he had he had uh listened to billy graham and and in the um the the front room that night um, my my mother had tried to talk to him and, and he, he shushed her so that uh, he could hear um, the whole of it and then he he never said that he had that you know he, he never he never went out and and witnessed on the street or anything like that but he witnessed in the house to the fact that he would uh, go and um, uh, through the years my mother was so hurt by everything but um, he he then started baking bread for her and um, going down into the basement to wash clothes and, and uh, hang them on the line and, and all of that and, and then he was so sickly over um, uh, having smoked and emphysema and um, and um, the um, the night that he died well that um, On uh, June, no, that was that was December twenty eighth. Um, uh, he had told my mother uh, that uh, she 
she she had been so unforgiving of him in many respects prior to this that uh, I feel that that was the last piece that he had to make because well. because he he told her he rolled over in bed and he he told her he says you know Hilma he says I've always loved you. And, and it was at that time that uh, uh, he got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and um, and he had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. he, he, hit, he hit the sink and uh, they had been married 61 years. And. Um, I want to say 61, I believe, I think that, and, um, and, um, I, I honestly feel that that was the last piece that he had to say to her, it was to tell her that he loved her and that. But you see, that's the evidence that <coughs> someone is truly saved. When a person becomes saved, they become a new creature and their behavior changes. Right. So they, they acted differently. And, and she was saying that her father, uh, before he died, uh, he started listening to Billy Graham, started listening, uh, and would kind of witness it around the house. Mm. And before he died, he told his wife how much he loved her. Oh, now, you know, there are a lot of Praise people, uh, they get married, and you, you, you have people that are unequally yoked. You'll have a... Really? You'll have a saved person or an unsaved person, uh, and so often they'll have a lot of children. And today, you know, divorce is so quick and so easy, and so uh, today, you know, they push and they promote divorce. Yeah, but there are so people long. that, even though yeah, been for 40 years. one of the parties is not saved, they will stay together for the children's sake. They will, they will put their children's interest ahead of their own. And Jesus said, even a heathen man, even an unsaved man, won't give his children stones. And so we just want to you know, at least praise the good Lord for those that uh, will stay together for the sake of their children, and place their children before their, their self, their own needs. Very good testimony. Yes? Yeah, I, just, I just want to say thank you to the good Lord for all these male men that are here, <laughs> and I was blessed to have a male dad. None of my blessed to be married to a male husband. Right. And I just thank the good Lord that, um, you know, he as a godly man was able to um, show uh, this type of living to, to our son. Amen. So, Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of you may hear me on the radio now as, I, as I'm promoting and inviting people to church here. I say, you know, if you want to come to a place where we only have two genders, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're not confused at all about who we are or what we preach. Amen. See? Very good. And then I invite folks out here. You know what? Very few can do that now. And the ones who can do it are afraid to. Most of them, they don't have the courage anymore. Nope. Uh, who else wants to give a testimony about their fathers? Folks, you know, if your father worked hard, he raised you, he kept shirt on your back, clothes on your, you know, and roof over your head, uh, food in your belly, you really need to to make a good, you know, to, to give a testimony of your father. Oh, yes. My dad allowed me to be introduced to my mom. And See, yeah. I mean, I got a chance to know a woman and that made me realize what my my purpose on earth was for when she passed away. And I got her to come to Christ. Praise and Christ. I told my dad, I says, I know why I'm here on earth. I'm here to see that my two brothers and my dad get to heaven. And that was it. But I thank him for that. And if you ever met my dad, which one day hopefully he'll come to this church, uh, you're going to think that I'm his clone. I'm like mini me. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's your brother. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But he's not saved. I know. He needs to be. And I, I pray for him every day and I tell him, you know, but I thank my dad for giving me the chance to know my mom. All right. 
Amen. Very good. I think we'll stop in down there before your brother sells that place. Yeah. I'll just say, look, I'm coming to get you. We're going to drag you to church before you go to hell. <laughs> 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 Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I work seven days a week, but I get my rest in the Lord's work. Right. That's a different story, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. okay. Who else has a good testimony? I know some of you folks in here, and I know your dads. I know you should be given a testimony. Because your dad kept, kept shoes on your feet. Your dad didn't send you to a public school. He sent mm -hmm. you to a different school. <laughs> There's a lot of things he did for you. In fact, some of you, if you don't speak up, I'm going to call your dad and tell him. <laughs> 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 okay. Yes, that's it. Uh, I recently said something about my dad. Uh, but I'm thankful for him, and he did keep food in our bellies and shoes on our feet. But um, I was thankful that he was a Christian and that my husband is and our two sons-in-law and our uh, grandson-in-law uh, <laughs> is uh, our Christian fathers. All right, very good. Very uh, good. How many of you ladies are married to Christian men and want to, want to thank the Lord that you're married to Christian men? Thank you. Yeah. Better say some hands go up. <laughs> this is not right. <laughs> okay. Well, if, if there's no more testimonies, I guess, uh, does anybody need prayer today? No, I should say, is there anyone that don't need prayer today? <laughs> yes? Diane that comes to the Bible study was asking if we would pray for her husband. Uh, He's going in for a habit defibrillator put in. Uh, oh, on Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. He used to come to church here for a while, but they quit coming for some oh. reason. I don't, I don't think he liked that. Like what, what he was hearing, maybe not. His name is Jerry. Jerry? Jerry. Hmm. Okay. So she asked us to pray for him. Yeah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to hold Jerry up. First, Lord, we just want to hold him up for his salvation, Father God, Lord. And, and uh, of course, because we know that until you receive that first blessing of salvation, you can't receive the others. And then, Lord, we want to ask, Father God, too, that you might be with him right now as he goes through that operation and he has that, that uh, fibrillator put into him. The Lord God, that you would guide the surgeon's hand, the Lord. And we know that all you have to do is to say, be healed. And he'll be healed. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Who else has a prayer request? Yes, Sandy. My neighbor called me this morning and asked me to come over. And her husband recently, uh, the other day, I guess, I'm not sure why, broke his leg. And he's 95. And, wow. Uh, but she called me to pray for her because she's got shingles now. And she's been oh, boy. How old is she? Gee, shingles are rough any time, especially when you're older than me. Well, what's her name and his name? Her name's Penny and his name's Charles. Penny and Charles. Let's pray. Lord, we just want to hold up Penny and Charles. Father God, first again, I don't know them. I don't know if they're saved. But Lord, if they're asking for prayer, they probably are. So we want to hold them up and ask Father God, Lord, especially even with Penny more so, because we know those, those shingles can be very, very painful, Lord that you would touch him. And we know when you're 95 years old, a broken leg takes a long time to heal. So, Lord, we just want to ask that you would touch him. And, Lord, we know that, that all you have to do is say the word, and that heal, that leg could be healed instantly. But we want to hold him up and just say, Lord, that thy perfect will be done with them. Knowing your will is a perfect will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who else has a prayer request? Oh, oh Grandma. Yeah. Pray for a friend of mine named Tom. He's a teacher in the Cleveland school system, and he's had an offer to move into a second floor of some friend's home from a basement apartment. And I, he doesn't have anybody in this location unless he finds somebody at his church to help him move. 
He's got a big load of... Is that Tom Ashbury? Tom Ashbury. Okay, he's helping. Yeah. All right, let's 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 pray for Tom. Uh, he needs somebody over there. Where, mm -hmm. where is... Uh, well, you know what? There's a lot of those folks that he can work with out there uh, that work with him on the west side, the people that work for Act for America. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, they're close by him, okay? Right. Uh, I could put, get on the phone and call a couple of them, okay? okay. Uh, but basically, you would be better have Tom call me and tell me when he expects to move and all that, and then, then I'll help him out. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, yeah, we just want to hold up Tom. Just hold him up to you and ask him, Lord, because we know he loves you. And ask, Father God, that you provide workers, Lord, you provide him the help he needs, Lord. Yes. Uh, and, and Father God, that that he's making the right decision to, to move. Lord, we just would ask you would place Tom where you would have him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, if there's no more, then you're excused. Go out there and give him heaven. Happy Father's Day, men. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I'm trying to get uh, some uh, gin uh, ginger uh, extract. Ginger extract. Yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't have that. Ginger extract. But what was that other room? The other one is. Uh, Selenium. Selenium, that's it. Yeah. The more concentrated it is, the better. Because that's what I'm going to be dealing with with this oncologist coming up Tuesday. We'll to see him about uh, mistletoe injections. And mistletoe injections. And I don't know if they're making mistletoe uh, tincture or not. But uh, that and I've got to talk to him more about more concentrated curcumin. Uh, uh, right, right. I'm taking four of those uh, between four of those capsules at a time. And what I'm finding out is I may need to take more of the curcumin. Yeah, the curcumin. With the pepper, uh, pepper and black pepper mixed with it to potentiate it. That's why I thought the turmeric, the what I was getting yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Definitely yeah. had to be synergistic factor. Yeah, even then, they were saying that there's a. Uh, you need to get it more concentrated with the curcumin and um, the, the ginger with the turmeric they're kind of uh, similar and related and they tend to potentiate each other more as long as they're going to the ginger. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I know one thing, I did get a little sample of the ginger tincture. It is powerful. Yeah. You know you're All right. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. All right. No, no. Thanks for the testimony. <laughs> Praise God for your godly hearing. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, I got a little wish list going here. Yeah, I, I, I sure yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. 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 I'm hoping that Tuesday when I get with this oncologist down there that I can stay on the herbal path. Okay. He's going to try to push surgery on me. Very good. Okay. You too. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Right. Eric, Eric, I always forget yours, so I remember Dave, but I always forget yours. I gotta write it down. No, John, John, it's impossible if they don't kill us. John is easy because he's an outsider because he's here to most of the Washington crowd. Washington is so corrupt. You know, if you can ever find it. He's going to watch what he's doing. Well, he's going to say what's going to wake people up. And I've been uh, sending out my videos and the sermons. And at the top, I've been asking uh, is Donald Trump afraid to repeat the sinner's prayer? Because that's one of the issues with Pastor Ernie and Dale about, you know, being uh, cautious about Trump. And, you know, Hillary is so crooked and so is Obama. They're in cahoots. They've, they've been causing, causing a lot of that. Uh, 
Islamic No, I think he's going to stand up for America. He's, he's got a big business going, and I think he's got to make the economy better so people can afford his products. Trump. He knows how to make money. I give him credit for that. Let us go. I'm going to get that flyer for you. Hold on. Thank you, Jim. God bless you. Yeah, he's a Hillary addict. Oh, the character he's talking about. He's, he's, he's fully deceived. Hillary is crooked as Obama during the bed you get. Hillary has uh, committed so many frauds and so much criminality and killed so many people. I'd be afraid of her. She's terrible. You can't trust her. She uses people up like toilet tissue. Wipes her behind on you and then she... Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we know well, I think Trump's going to, like I said, he's going to have to make the economy better so people can afford his stuff. Yeah. If he can't afford his stuff, how's he going to profit? I'd like to see him build that wall. Yeah. I think well, that's that's the thing. If he does half the things he said he would, we'd be a whole lot better off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? Obama probably the promise to rule. We know Hillary about what's going on. He promised what? He promised everything to rule. Yeah, well, that's generally a uh, uh, status quo for most of those politicians. They promise you the world, and when it comes right down to no, Jim, I said the road, they give you nothing. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. Oh, we couldn't make it happen. It was impossible. Isn't she for the Muslims? Yeah, she. They, the what I've seen on the YouTube is that Hillary and Obama are in together about promoting ISIS and also selling selling them all kinds of uh, military weapons, missiles and everything else to uh, fight Europe and every, the rest part of the world. And the, uh, what am I trying to say, the Arabs uh, from the uh, Arab world have uh, contributed several hundred million dollars to her campaign. Wow. She's bought and paid for by them. Wow. Yeah, it's not good. She's totally evil. We see a lot of Muslims at the free clinic, believe it or not. That's not good. Yeah, they're bad. I mean, as uh, patients. Well, the best advice I can tell you is that they, you know, they relish on being able to lie to Christians. So I don't trust any of them. I don't care what they say. I don't either. Ever. I think that's the best policy is. Uh, don't trust them no matter what. I don't care if they tell me they're saved or anything else. I can't believe them because... Oh, we don't talk to them. They're just patients waiting in the waiting room. Yeah, they uh, do all they can to uh, lie and deceive people, especially 